Well, the former boss of the UN Climate Change Convention, Christina Figueres, has blasted Australia over our alleged suicidal position on climate action. Meanwhile, the New South Wales Energy Minister behind the latest renewable-focused energy policy has been sprung, taking a private jet to a meeting in the far west of the state. To discuss that and what Australia's emissions really mean for world disasters in future, I'm joined by Liberal MP for Hughes, Craig Kelly. Craig, good day. Yeah, great to be with you, Chris. Um, so the Paris Agreement is not enough for Ms Figueres? <laughs> well, firstly, Chris, the irony of rolling out uh, the warmest rolling out this Christina Figueres today, remember, this is a woman that has praised China. She is someone that said uh, she doesn't like our democratic systems and she would rather have China's totalitarianism to deal with uh, so-called climate change. She's actually said China has it right as they build hundreds of new coal-fired power stations, <laughs> but we have it wrong. This woman is a joke. She's an embarrassment. And to rock her out today, when Australia's involved in great tensions with China and when she's such a China lover and praises their communist totalitarian attitude, just shows exactly where these warmists come from. Maybe, maybe it was actually planned. Maybe there was a little bit of a conspiracy mm. in all of that. She's also <laughs> critical of the Prime Minister. We've spoken about this before, using our Kyoto credits in our Paris targets. After this year, though, um, that mm. might be redundant, mightn't it? Well, Chris, it's absolutely right. The Prime Minister's absolutely right you could use those, those credits. So there's targets we've got set for better or for worse for 2030. That's what we set. Now, to go beyond that, to set this sort of net zero uh, by 2050 is cloud cuckoo land. I hear people that talk about, oh, net zero, net zero. They don't have an absolute clue what they are talking about. You have to... Net zero means economy-wide emissions, not just from electricity. Now, our uh, emissions from electricity only count for one-third. You've also got our transport sector, which is about 20%. You've got our agriculture sector, which is, which is actually farting and burping cows and sheep. Yeah. So unless you're going to go around and slaughter all the herds, Chris, that will help get you to net zero. And you have to close down what we call 10% of the emissions comes from fugitive emissions, which are the natural processes when we extract uh, LNG. Uh, we make the uh, natural gas and also coal. So you have to close down our, our coal mining, close down our LNG exports. There goes $100 billion worth of export out of the economy. It is cloud cuckoo land stuff. These people need to go and make sure they know what they're talking about because they are going to destroy the economy of Australia, destroy our prosperity and drive future generations of Australians into poverty. Can I just raise a point? I was listening to Green Senator Larissa Waters during the week in the Senate, and don't, don't ask me why, don't ask me why. I must have been in a bad reception area. <laughs> <laughs> but she was saying to Simon Birmingham, representing the, the Prime Minister in the Senate, that mm. we've got to do more than just our commitment and our targets for the Paris Agreement. We've got to go beyond it, because if we don't, we will not stop the future of natural disasters in the world. Can someone please tell her, or can you go to her office before you go home and tell her what we emit and what impact we have on natural disasters around the planet? Well, Chris, see, let's, let's look at the evidence. Now, the evidence shows that the number of natural disasters since the turn of the century is actually declining. They are the figures, the United Nations own figures. If we look at deaths from climate disasters, they are down something like 90 5% over the last century and are down 50% over this 20 years compared to the previous 20 years of the last century. So you've got natural disasters down, you've got deaths down. You've also got, when you look at the insurance claims, the real cost of insurance claims of natural disasters is falling. On the other hand, Chris, we've got record crop yields across the board. We've got islands in the Pacific that are growing in size. Everything these alarmists carry on about, the exact opposite is the truth. They are fraudsters, they are doing it for their own power and they, are, they have no idea, Chris, the damage that they are going to do to our nation's prosperity. Now, listen, what's the Matt Keane, the Energy Minister in New South Wales, doing not liaising with federal government about this new New South Wales renewable-focused energy policy and then he jumps on a jet yesterday, a private jet, and goes off to Cobar? Is he serious? Well, well, Chris, I've heard there's some idea in New South Wales to have 100% uh, renewable uh, electricity. Now, again, Chris, this is, this is a nonsense. You, when the sun... I don't think these people understand what, what a zero means. 
when the sun doesn't shine, Chris, at night time, it doesn't matter how many, you could cover the entire state of New South Wales with solar panels. When the sun sets, like now, a solar power is delivering zero to the grid. Mm. And when the wind doesn't blow, which often happens in the evening, you get zero. Now, how are you going to back that up with batteries? The, the idea that you all will back it up with batteries, and Chris, just to give you some idea of how many batteries you would need, South Australia has the world's largest battery. Right? Now, it puts into the grid 30 megawatts at a time. Now, we here in New South Wales, we currently need between 5,000 and 7,000 megawatts of coal-fired power at any one stage. So we need 200 of the world's <laughs> largest battery, right? Uh, and, Chris, that gets us through to four hours. <laughs> so it, and then, and then it runs out. So to get you through a night, Chris, you've got to have something close to, like, 800 of the world's largest battery it's, that they've got in South it's Australia. It's And then you've got to hope... It is. And then you've got to hope the next day that there's not only enough sun and wind to power the grid in entirety, but there's excess to recharge the battery I know. to get you through the next night. I've got so to run. You need you've, thousands. You've, it's, it's, you've, it's madness. It's I complete it's madness. Ma it's totally madness. Craig Kelly, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> I love when he puts it in terms that we can understand.